Hello, and welcome to Brand Clarity by Visions to Images, where we focus on strategy and business development for entrepreneurs at all different levels through branding and digital marketing techniques. Susie Libertor is the founder and art director of Visions to Images Creative Services, LLC. For the last decade, she has personally been instrumental in bridging gaps between the global digital market and neighborhood locations for some of the biggest brands around. Growth is possible for even a single location with the right professional branding techniques and Susie's signature strategies of Visions to Images. Stand out from your competitors and bring your visions to life while watching your sales skyrocket. Your host for this is Susie Libertor, owner of Visions to Images. Hello, everybody. Today on the podcast, I have Lance Grolick, and he's the founder of Ion Franchising. And I'm super excited to have him on here. We connected on LinkedIn, gotta love the power of LinkedIn. And I'm in the franchise industry and really appreciate him coming on. I told him he's like a celebrity out there with all of these things happening on LinkedIn. So thank you for coming on so much. Awesome, Susie. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit. I mean, we just talked a little bit, but tell everybody kind of how you got started in this industry and how you got to where you are. Will do. Uh, and by the way, I only play a celebrity on TV in real life. I'm just a real life person that helps people <laughs> find their perfect business. Uh, I'm 56 now, and uh, I started on Wall Street with my family. I came from a very entrepreneurial family. One of the questions a lot of people ask is, how do entrepreneurs even become entrepreneurs? In my case, I was born into it. I never saw anybody that had a real job. So uh, that's what I wanted, or that's what I, well, I knew I wanted that and uh, eventually became that. Uh, Bottom line, worked on Wall Street for dad's company and realized, you know, I, I didn't really love sitting at a desk, being in an office. And I had another relative that lured me across the country. I left New York, went to Arizona. And uh, I helped him build a, a TGI Fridays franchise empire when Fridays was big and it was it was a good thing and uh, built it to 225 million. And I definitely got a lot of great experience from that and realized, you know what? I love the franchise world. And then I became a franchisee of multiple brands like Wingstop and Krispy Kreme Donuts. And then I created my own brands once I had the guts and confidence, so to speak, because uh We all need that in the early stages. So here we are all these years later. I'm a franchise broker. I represent about 800 brands in every imaginable industry. And the best part, Susie, a lot of people don't even realize is franchise broker, consultant, we are are your best friend. We don't cost you a dime. We get paid by the brands. Whether you use me or not, you end up paying the same exact franchise fee. So essentially, I'm, I'm your free advocate. And I love to leverage all of my experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly of what I've experienced to make sure people find the best brand for them. Thank you so much. I love it. I love your hearing your story. Congratulations on your success and growth. Thank you. It's amazing to hear that. Yeah. And I think entrepreneurship can be, like you said, I, I didn't grow up in the entrepreneurship industry. Like I just knew I wanted to do it. My family is very blue collar. So it's interesting to hear your side of how you're like, no, I don't know anybody that works nine to five. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, it it is interesting. And believe me, I acknowledge, I think one of the reasons I'm successful is I put myself in the shoes of the people that I'm working with. I do understand that people are scared out of their mind in the beginning. They they think they're going to fail. And that's actually the reason people should be looking at a franchise. Because it's pretty hard to fail when you fit when you pick the right franchise for you, and that's I, I, I'm your guardrail. You know, if you're driving late at night on a country road with no lights, you better hope there's some guardrails. Well, I'm your guardrail to keep you safe oh. and keep you on that road to success. That's so good. I I've noticed, especially during the pandemic, and I'm sure you might agree with this. Why we got started in, I mean, we've had the agency for many many years. But when we really started to work with franchisors and franchisees was during the pandemic. And here's what's interesting about it is because people were on Facebook or LinkedIn groups or whatever, and they all say, I want to support small businesses, but not, you know, the big names or corporations or franchises. (laughs) And that's kind of where everything came about, to be honest, is because those people were getting hurt during the pandemic more than 
small business, well, both small businesses and them were getting hurt, right? But more and more people were trying to support the small businesses, but they're still locally owned and operated. They're still business owners. Yep. They're still giving back to the community. They're still doing all of these things, but there's this mindset and mind block of the stereotype that, oh, they're just, they're, they're just a corporation and they're getting paid regardless. And it's so I, funny to absolutely. me to hear this. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, you know, it is it is funny. So many people forget that franchisees are small business owners. It just so happens they are following a system that's laid out by, in some cases, a large corporation like McDonald's. Right. But some of these large franchisees of McDonald's, they all started off small and became these sort of larger corporations themselves that you know, that that people choose to dislike. But Absolutely. at the end of the day, they're all locally owned businesses supporting the local community. So, and look, the pandemic was that anomaly that nobody knew what the heck to do initially. Everybody froze. Yeah. And fortunate, fortunately for the, as you know, being in the industry, the franchisors most jumped into action to help their franchisees get PPP Absolutely. money or oh, sure. EIDL money or whatever it was. And it's amazing. And the independents are there, you know, essentially in a feeling like they're on a life raft somewhere and they don't know when they're going to be rescued. Right. And they're by themselves. And, you know, but I, I think most people these days do know the difference between uh, surrounding yourself with a great company like being Absolutely. a franchisee. Yeah. And I think to that point, I mean, franchisees, um, they get so much support, um, at least the ones I know. I'm sure there's probably some bad experiences. The best do. Yeah, exactly. But most get support in marketing, insurance, um, HR, sales, they get trainings, they get support. Whereas when you're just starting off as a small business owner and an entrepreneur, you're probably not going to have that. You're going to have to find people and build that. And you have a great team already established for you when you come into that franchise. Absolutely. 100%. One of my favorite questions that I get all the time is, why do I need a franchise? Can I do it on my own? <laughs> and my answer is, because I'm very into marketing and branding, and I have created my own brand successfully and sold. And, and I tell people, I said, look, you are going to spend a lot of time building your own brand, a yeah. lot, mm -hmm. and a lot of money because you don't know what you don't know, and you're going to have to hire experts to help you with the pieces that you don't know. And, you know, so time, money, energy, you don't have a proven blueprint or, or roadmap, so you will absolutely make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And how quickly you will be on the right path, nobody knows, because you're creating something that hasn't been done. Yeah. In a franchise, there's a whole level of predictability. There's a lot of people that have done it before you. So it's a proven system. So the hardest question I ever ask people I work with, you know, Susie, are you going to be an average franchisee of this brand or are you naturally above average? It just so happened I was a top franchisee. I was in the top 5% of franchisees at the brands that I was with. It wasn't, that's not me bragging. That was the reality. I didn't know I, I didn't know I was going to be better than the average. But that's just my nature. And some people get into a franchise and flounder because maybe they're not set to be their own boss. Maybe they've just told the franchisor, like maybe their old boss as well, a good story yeah. about how good they are. And, you know, you know, that whole thing when you're interviewing and there's an old expression when you're hiring people, some employees know exactly what to tell you. They know what you want to hear. Right. And they talk a great story yep. and they start working and you're like, yep. he doesn't have that experience. He can't do some of the simple tasks I need him to do. Right. So, you know, that's. I do. I do. And I can totally relate. And I'm, gl I'm glad you kind of touched on marketing and branding and how that is so hard as an entrepreneur versus, I mean, franchisors have a different story, but when you're a franchisee, like you said, you come into that. What kind of tip would you give somebody if they're looking for branding or marketing in the franchise industry? You're talking about somebody that wants to get into a franchise or somebody that's already in as a franchisee? If they're already in as a franchisee, right? Yeah. So, they, so they want to market, but they have corporate help, but they still want to do their own marketing. Yeah. 
That's a great question, and it's one of my favorites. It's all it's all truly all franchise brands touch on local store marketing. LSM was the common acronym, and as a as a franchisee, I've been president of the Franchise Advisory Council for brands like like Wingstop, in addition to on the ad co-op or the ad council, dealing with the marketing. I love that. And the reality is franchising is successful because I was the local person in my market. I knew my market better than the franchisor because I was local. They knew everything else better because it was their brand that I was essentially borrowing to be successful. So local store marketing has never been more important. Let me give you a prime example from from the old days of Wingstop. I am a big believer in the restaurant industry, specifically where you can actually taste a product Mm -hmm. and there's muscle memory there, so to speak. And when you give somebody free food, when you're setting up your kitchen, uh, free food always tastes better than food that people paid for. (laughs) So I said to Wingstop, what do we have to get people excited about our, our food? What do we have to get them in for the first time if they've never, ever heard of us, which most people in the early days had not? And they saw, oh, we have this business card you can hand out on one side. It has your information on the back. It says five wings free when you buy 10 wings. And I said, that's a great start, but that's an awful offer to get people in the door. And he said, well, why is it an awful offer? And I told the marketing department <laughs> that, that I want a card that says five wings free. There's no purchase necessary. Hand me the card, walk through my door, and I'm going to give you five wings and a homemade ranch or blue cheese for free. And they go, oh, that's, that's, you're giving away a lot of stuff. And they have to, well, don't you want them to buy something? <laughs> no. If we are that good, I want to give some goodwill to them. I don't want to do expensive radio ads to start. Yeah. Or, which is which is all that was available in the old days when I did Wingstop. There wasn't digital marketing campaigns. And all of this stuff still works magnificent today. Prove to people that you have amazing service and you're clean and food that is different and food that people like, and they will come back. And I opened my first one. And before you know it, I opened store number four. In fact, right here... I have, I'll read it to you. I have a Wingstop glass, whatever you call these things, like paperweight that I had made as a a commemorative gift for my team. World record for Wingstop opening in July 2006. We did $34,931, the largest opening of Wingstop in those days. Obviously, it's exceeded that now. And that was all because we were so focused on the local marketing. This was store four. We, by, by this time, we were well entrenched in the community and they craved our wings. We slaughtered, I mean, Buffalo Wild Wings always did great as a bar, but we sold far more wings than they did. Hey there, I want to interrupt this episode with a quick message. If you're listening to this podcast episode and want to learn about branding your franchise or small business, then go to brandingbridge.com. That's branding-bridge.com. I totally 100% agree. I work with a lot of franchisees. And again, going back to that story about local showing up during the pandemic, what are you doing to give back? How are you showing up? What are you doing for your customer experience? All of those things, what are you doing to give back or to get them in like you're talking about that experience and that free stuff? I mean, you can sit there and say, oh, it's a free, free, free. Help them come in. I love it. Absolutely. And one of the things I'll tell you, Susie, one of my favorite stories, I was the VP of operations for a a pretty prominent brand today. I'd rather not say the name of it. Sure. And uh, they're based in California still. Mm -hmm. And they're owned by a huge company now. And I'll never forget, they were having so many problems with franchisees, mainly because they probably picked the wrong franchisees in the first place. Mm -hmm. But there was one lady in particular that was very bright, and she owned several stores. And she said, you know, I'm glad you're here working for the company. I think you'll do great things. Would you mind coming by my store and telling me how you think we're doing and, and, you know, uh, review our financials, review our sales history? But I know we have a real, really big marketing problem in this company, and I'd like your help with that. So no problem. So she she and I were going to meet at one particular store, but 
I checked out the other stores in the prior days, prior to coming, check out operations, Absolutely. and I meet her for the meeting. And she starts, ye- you know, essentially yelling at me. She was very excited about marketing, about yeah. marketing. Forget about marketing. You have an operations problem. Mm-hmm. So let's address the elephant in the room that you're not aware of. Mm-hmm. I went to all, all of your stores, unsupervised. Nobody knows who I am for a visit. And more or less, everything's terrible. The, the food's not being done right. The place is dirty. Your staff is awful. So there's a lot of confusion as to operations and marketing. It's it's the same old, it's kind of like if you're going to work out and lose 200 pounds, you need to make sure your nutrition is in check. Absolutely. Because, because you're probably going to hurt yourself in the gym trying to get to your goal if you're not helping yourself in the kitchen, so to speak. So it's the same thing with a franchise. A lot of people talk about marketing. In fact, from my experiences, there's two the two biggest things that franchisees will complain about mm-hmm. is marketing and support. Mm-hmm. Marketing and support. And a lot of times the marketing is not the franchisor's true problem. It's mm-hmm. the operations in the example that I just gave you. No, I, I I would agree with that. Thanks for sharing that. You have so much great knowledge. I love it. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time and I yeah. love it. Love it, I love it. Know. And you know what? I still help every single person that buys or invests in a franchise through me. Uh, most of them ask at some point, well, wait a second. Okay, it's great you found me a brand. Well, are we still going to talk? And I and I laugh and I go, well, normally speaking, no. But okay. if you need me, if you need me, I am your free consultant for life. Oh. So, so I'll probably start a support group for that as well. Because oh, as you know, franchisees get... So much support from yeah. the brand, including existing franchisees and franchise business consultant success coaches. But, you know, look, me being the outside guy, not being on the inside of that any particular brand anymore, uh, I love to help people because a lot of the um, the business metrics, if you will, or the fundamentals are the same. doesn't matter whether you're in air conditioning or a restaurant. It just so happens restaurants are the hardest. Oh, I, yeah. Restaurants are such, yeah, they're very hard. I agree. (laughs) So what do you like most about being in the franchise industry? What I like is, you know, if you look at surveys and statistics that come out every year, every month, 65% of America at any one point wants to truly be their own boss. And most people, I don't know if you would have thought that was more, that was less. The reality is, Everybody starts looking and it's a daunting process. Where do you start? Mm -hmm. And as we were alluding to earlier in this conversation, you know, you can start your own brand. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people do or try to do. Or you can jump into something like a franchise. But franchising for years, everybody thinks you have to be a millionaire to own a franchise. They think of McDonald's. The reality is there are so many brands under $200,000. So oh, many brands sure. under Absolutely. Yeah. And you can get financing with literally, you know, literally 20% down payment. You mm-hmm. only need a 680 credit score. The federal government, the SBA, wants to lend money to franchisors. And they guarantee yeah. these loans 90% to any bank that's doing these loans. So the banks love doing SBA loans. So the bottom line is anybody that truly wants to get into business for themselves mm-hmm. can with a franchise. And the question simply is which is best for you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I have a free assessment on my website. It helps people identify based on their life, life experiences, mindset, skill set, right? What what businesses or industries might be best for them. And believe it or not, you know, it's not about following your passion anymore. Use your passions, your hobby. Yeah. You know, your, your business and the way you make money. Yeah. uh, There are a lot of unsexy franchises. You can make a lot of money. Sure. (laughs) And I think to that point, like you said, like there is so many names for a franchise that you can get involved with. And I think that people can get very overwhelmed in A, cost, or B, what franchise do I want to invest in, right? (laughs) Don't do a Google search. You'll be there all all night. Oh my gosh, totally. I would never even know where to start if it was up to me. I would be like, um, (laughs) and I know, I know I would not be want to want to be in food, but I know I don't want to, like, I don't want to do brick and mortar, right? So it's great that you have assessments and you can help people kind of guide them in that way. 
It's like when I went to college, I was like, oh, I wanted to be a preschool teacher. I found out how much I needed to do. And I was like, that is not me. I don't like school. And then they did a career assessment on me and they were like, you should get into marketing. And I was like, that makes more sense to me. <laughs> so it's similar in your in in what you're saying for the assessment is let us help you find what what is good and can help you get to where you need to be. Absolutely. There are so many different areas. There's so many ways to make money. Yeah. And again, the initial reaction from people when I present certain things, I warn them in advance. They're like, Ew, that doesn't sound good. And then all of a sudden they realize, wait a second. Yeah. As it sinks in, they start to realize, wait, that's that's going to be a great business though. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, there was one young lady recently, I got her a zero down loan. She had worked with kids and she really wanted to continue working with kids. And I got her an amazing home-based franchise called Challenge Island. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She gets to work from home and it was, uh, I think it was a $45,000 signature loan that she just signed for, didn't even have to put a down payment and she was in business. And nice. I saw her in the Dominican Republic, I think Punta Cana or something for the annual convention for Challenge Island. I'm like, look at this. She signs up, she gets started for a couple of months in the middle of the winter. She's sunning herself on a beach. What a life. Yeah, absolutely. I love and it's that. a business write-off, Susie. One hundred percent. I'm all about that. And I'm all about warm weather because I'm in Ohio and I will get away whenever possible. (laughs) Both work in my favor. Love it. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, You shared so much great information. I'm definitely going to post the links and let people check out that free assessment. I really enjoyed talking with you. I'd love being here. I'll do it again anytime you need me. Thank you, everybody, for listening in on today's Brand Clarity episode with Susie Libertor. Two things. First and foremost, please, if you liked this episode, please subscribe and leave some positive reviews. Also, don't forget to sign up for Stop Sending Your Customers to the Competition and get my insider secrets to compelling branding that converts. You can find that at branding-bridge.com. It's a free workbook for you to check out right now all of the branding techniques and strategies that I use for my paying clients.